welcome. I am so glad you guys are all here. Look how many of you there are on today's Zoom meeting. This is great. We are getting more and more people joining our bird brain class every day, which is super cool. Uh, my name's Kelsey and I work for Bird Brain. I am the professional development coordinator for Bird Brain. So normally I travel around the country and I teach teachers coding and robotics, but traveling around the country is not really a thing that anyone does right now. So right now I join you from this awesome studio that we have here and I teach robotics and coding and making to anybody who wants to join in. And that's for people who are here live in our Zoom classroom. And if you wanna join, I'll tell you how to register at the end of the webinar today. If you wanna join a future one. Um, or if you want to, um, if you wanna just tune in live on Facebook, we also stream live to Facebook. So, cool. Um, a couple of quick um, norms about today. So we are in Zoom class today. And normally in school, everybody who has your video open, and you can share your video if you are on Zoom, nobody will see you except for me, so you can feel free to share your video. Um, but show me what you do in school when you have a question or if you wanna contribute. You do what? You, yeah, you raise your hand like this. But that's kinda of hard for me to see on Zoom because there's a bunch of little squares. So some of you have been here before. How do you raise your hand in Zoom school? You. Stick your hand right in front of the camera and wave it back and forth. Exactly, exactly. So that makes it a lot easier for me to see because a lot of times we're going to be muted or you're going to be muted and I'll be talking. So sometimes you'll be able to, um, sometimes you'll be able to unmute yourselves. Sometimes you won't. Um, so um, if you're if you're muted and you can't unmute yourself, you can always say something in the chat or do this. And if I don't see you, you can use the chat like that. Also. Since we're on Zoom school and you're often muted, I can't hear what you guys are thinking or what you're saying a lot of the time. So if you have a, if you have a feeling about something, um, you should let me know physically or with your face. So if you really like something that somebody else did, show me what you might do with your face or with your hands. If you really like something someone else did. Kenji's doing one of these. He's doing some sign language applause. What else could you do if you like something someone else did? You could do, yeah, you could do a little, hey, rockin'. What else could you do? Show me one more. If you like something somebody else did, you could do like a, you could show applause. Yeah, don't clap down here because I can't see it, right? But you could do that, that's great. Uh, uh, little Sam, that's wonderful. <laughs> um, so also, just so you guys know, we're being really safe with our Zoom meeting too. So only the people who have registered and only the people who we know their names can come in. So nobody will get in here who's not supposed to be here. Um, but also, I'd like to do a couple of quick introductions. I would love if you would share your first name, and I'd love for maybe four people to do this, share your first name and the last fun adventure you had. So for me, the last fun adventure I had was to Home Depot because we had to buy all this wood to make all these shelves and our nice like um, our, our nice desk here. So I had to go to Home Depot to buy some wood, which I had never really bought like wood before. And so that was quite a fun adventure. And then we brought it back here and Matt taught me how to sand it down and stain it. It was pretty fun. But we're going to unmute all of you guys. You may also have to unmute yourself, but raise your hand if you'd like to introduce yourself. How about you, Micah? You are unmuted. Uh, I, the last fun adventure I had was making paper egg bugs. Ooh, making paper egg bugs? Headphones. Headphones. <laughs> Ooh, that's cool. Did, were they, they, did they look like headphones or did they work like headphones? It looked like headphones. That's pretty cool. I like that adventure. That's great. That's great. Who else? Raise your hand. Who else has a great adventure? How about you, little Sam? My dad had a house yesterday. What did you do yesterday, remember? What, what, is, what did we do? Oh, um, we had an adventure making our robot from yesterday, our puppet. <laughs> that turned out so great on Twitter, too, Sam. Oh, my gosh. What was the name of the, the, the mouth-moving puppet that you made? Uh, a blue jean joe blue jean joe oh my gosh channeling so... his inner elsa <laughs> it was so funny yeah you made this puppet yesterday and you decorated it like a hillbilly with a beard and a hat you added lights in the beard with it it was so beautiful and you guys should there it is oh my gosh if you haven't seen it yet you should definitely check it out on twitter if you go to the bird brain twitter 
Um, we, we retweeted it so you can definitely, oh my gosh, that is so funny, Sam. If we, if this is the way that I like to uh, show appreciation, we can show some appreciation to Sam. How do you show appreciation in your video screen? Let's show him some appreciation. That's great. That's great. Uh, Thank how about you. one Thank more you. person who else would like to introduce themselves and tell us a great adventure that you had? How about you, Kimber? My name's Kimber and a great adventure I had, we built a campfire with a magnifying glass. Whoa, how did you use the magnifying glass? What'd you use it for? To make a campfire. You, like you started the fire with a magnifying glass? You can do that. Whoa, that's so cool. I've heard of people doing that, but I've never done it. That is really, really cool. So you use like the sun coming in through the magnifying glass to start the fire? The trick is you've just got to make it really, like the dot as small as possible and then put it on like a tip or something. That is really cool. That it You're the first forever. person I've ever met who's like done that. That's really cool, Kimber. Thanks for sharing your adventure. This is it great. It does take a while, though. Yeah, it like might take while. a little while. <laughs> you know, starting fires usually does, unless it doesn't, in which case, you know, that's why you have water nearby. <laughs> All right. So we're going to mute everybody again because I want to introduce what a rover actually is. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you just basically like the basic design for a rover. The basic design for a rover is really simple. So you guys can go around your houses right now and find what you need. A rover basically has three parts to it. It has a chassis, which is spelled funny, but it's pronounced chassis. It's got an axle and it's got wheels. So the chassis of ours is a Tazo organic chai tea box because Matt and I can't stop drinking chai. <laughs> so you might find a little box like that to make a chassis. You'll need something, the axle is what the wheels are attached to. So my axles are some chopsticks. And then it's gonna need some wheels, probably four, but I don't know, it's your rover, you do you. Um, so I made my wheels out of some cups. I cut, the, I cut the ends off of some cups and I made those my wheels. But, so you guys can start making your rover right now. You don't really need any other direction from me. You can make your rover. But what I thought we'd do today, something a little different from what we've done in the past webinars uh, and in the past classes is, so I've already made a rover and you can start making yours right now. First of all, I bet you can do better than I did because my rover has some real issues. First of all, it doesn't um, touch the ground. The wheels, the wheels don't touch the ground. So I'm going to go to this shot here so you can really see it. Yeah, see on my rover, when I set it on the ground, my wheels don't, don't touch. So there's probably an issue that we need to solve. Also, the wheels can kind of spin independently from the, the axle. So that might be an issue later on. But what I thought we might do that might be kind of different and fun today is I thought we could use the engineering design process to fix my rover and we could do that together as a class today. So raise your hand and you remember how to raise your hand. Raise your hand if you've heard of the engineering design process before. Can we go to gallery view so I can see who's heard of it before? Okay, some people have heard of it before, that's great. Okay, so the engineering design process is a really um, a useful tool when you're trying to make something because it's a, it's a process that goes over and over again. First, you ask, what's the problem? What are we trying to solve? You imagine some solutions, you plan it out, you make it, you test it, and then you're probably gonna find another problem because that's how engineering works. <laughs> so after you test it and you find another problem, you ask, what's the problem now? And let's imagine some solutions. And now let's plan it, let's make it, and let's test it. And to help us with that, I've also created this little, this little goal sheet for us today. Because we'll have a goal, we'll do the engineering design process, we'll, we'll make it work, and then we'll probably need to establish another goal. So let's start with what the, um, and also just to let you guys know what else you have at your disposal, you Zoom folks um, learning along with us, we also have this whole space, oops, over here. Check out all this stuff that we have set up here in the Bird Brain Studios. We've got all these different supplies that we can use to improve 
our rover design. So we've got paper plates, cardboard, string, paper cups, straws, pipe cleaners, ping pong balls, craft sticks, pencils, paper clips, brads, chopsticks, and even rubber bands to help us improve our rover design. And so when we're taking a look at this and trying to figure out how to fix it, we have all that stuff to use. And you might have some of that same stuff at your house or you might have something different. So let me ask you folks on Zoom, and I'm gonna allow you guys to unmute yourselves now. What do you think should be our first goal when we're fixing up this rover? What's the first thing we need to solve with this? You can unmute yourself and raise your hand. I'll go back to gallery view so I can see everybody. Who thinks they know what our first goal should be or who has an idea? Does anybody wanna suggest a goal? How about you, Kimber? What's our first, what should be our first goal here? First goal should be fixing the wheels. Because they don't even touch the ground. They don't touch the ground. Okay. So goal number one, make wheels touch ground. <laughs> I'm going to put uh, something underneath this so I don't bleed permanent marker on there because Matt will be upset. Okay. <laughs> I will be upset. I stained all this one. <laughs> make wheels touch ground. Okay. There's our goal number one. So... We have done the first step of the engineering design problem. We have a project uh, process. We have asked, what is the problem? The problem is that the wheels don't touch the ground. Now let's, I'm going to take us back to gallery view. I got it. Um, and who has an idea? What do you imagine could help fix this? This is the step we're on now. Imagine what could we do? What are some solutions? Anyone have a potential solution? What do you think, um, Aaron Aaron and, and family? We'll unmute you and you guys might need to unmute yourselves too. Yeah, there we go, we can hear you. Um, what should we, what's, what's a solution to making the wheels touch the ground? Maybe put it down some more? We could move the axle down a little bit. Yeah, we could do that. So oh, I you can move the wheels down more. Yeah, exactly. I can move those wheels down. So I took one of the wheels off and instead of the hole being right in the middle, I could move the hole down and put the hole near the bottom. And if it's closer to the bottom, I bet that, that the wheels, if I turn it around like this, yeah, I bet the wheels would actually touch. We could do that. So that's one solution. We could poke a hole lower down. Does anybody have, especially I'll go back over here. And we'll take a look at our supplies. Does anybody have any other ideas? I could poke a lower hole. That's one solution. Okay. What's another thing? How about you, Micah? What do you think we could do? How else could we make the wheels touch? We're, we are going to unmute you. Let's see. You got to unmute yourself, actually, Micah. Yeah. You could line the um, wheels with pipe cleaners. Yeah, what would that accomplish? How would how would lining the wheels with pipe cleaners help? Um, it would make it so that the wheels are larger and would mm. touch the ground. That's a great idea. So we could move the axle down or we could make the wheels bigger. That's an idea too. So those are two different ideas we've imagined to make our wheels touch the ground. Move the axle or make the wheels bigger. It looks like Kimber has one more idea for us. Um, what do you think, Kimber? I think you could use the cardboard to make a bigger wheel, like, like I did here. The yeah, thing. those are nice big wheels that you've got on there. That's great. So it sounds like um, that you've got that same idea as Micah to just make the wheels bigger. So what do we think? Should we move the axle down or make the wheels bigger? Uh, let's oh. everybody hold up a number, one or two. What should we do first? Make the wheels bigger is number one. Move the axle down is number two. Everybody hold up a number and let's see what we vote. So I see two, 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 two. Oh. <laughs> Kimber's holding up three because she says both. Okay, so two was move the axle lower. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna move the axle lower and then we'll see if that works. And if we still need to make the wheels bigger, bigger then we'll do that. Okay, so I'm gonna take my wheels off here. Wheel, wheel. And I'm gonna use my blade to make the axle lower down here or to, to mount the axle right near the bottom of the box. There we go, right near the bottom. And I'm just cutting little X's in my box here. And then I'm actually gonna use, um, I can use a, a chopstick to poke through. I need to not cut my finger, there we go. Or, I also 
I really like using knitting needles. I don't know if you have knitting needles at your house, but I kind of like using them to like start a hole off kind of gently like that. There we go. There's the knitting needle poking through the hole. And now this one, I'm gonna make, we're gonna move our axle down. Very great, there we go. And let's see if that can accomplish the goal of making the wheels touch. So we've got it through that way. And then we've got it out the other side, do to do, do. Great. All right. So now I have a ramp built that you can't see very well, especially not in this shot. But when I go back to the other shot, you can see this ramp that I've built because I want to send my rover down this ramp and then I, I want it to roll down the ramp. There we go. Hey, check it out. If I go back to this shot, look at there. The wheels touch now. The body of the chassis, or the, I shouldn't say the body of the chassis, the body is the chassis. The chassis now no longer sits on the ground. This is great. Goal number one. We did it. Woohoo! Check. We made the wheels touch the ground. That is great. All right, let's see what happens when I try to send it. I have a ramp over here. When I try to send it down the ramp, ooh, can you guys see what it's doing? Here's my ramp over here. When I try to send it down the ramp, uh, the wheels aren't spinning. Yeah, that's that's not what we want. <laughs> All right, so we did our we did our engineering design process here. We found the problem was the wheels weren't touching. We imagined a solution. We planned it out. We did it. We tested it, and now we've got another problem, which is that the wheels aren't spinning. So I think our second goal has to be get the wheels to spin. What do you guys think? Give me a thumbs up if you think that needs to be our second goal. All right. I'll make that our second goal. Make wheels spin. Okay. So let's, I need to put my blade away so I don't accidentally cut anything I don't want to. Let's imagine some solutions to getting the wheels to spin. Here, I can arrange that real fancy. Ooh, look at there, you can see everything all at once. So the problem now is to make the wheels spin Raise your hand if you've got some solutions. What are some solutions we can imagine to make these wheels spin? Raise your hand if you've got an idea. What do you think, Kimber? What's your idea for making these wheels spin? Uh, we can kind of glue, like we can kind of glue on the wheels mm. to this so they would stay. So they okay. kind of can't do anything else. So we could attach the wheels to the axle because right now the okay, wheels, the wheels aren't. There's one more problem with that. There's one more problem with that. What is it? They could still move like this. Yeah. So you have to glue it onto the um, chassis as well. Mm. So um, Kimber's identifying another problem, potentially another goal, which is that the way that this is arranged, it can still kind of move like this, and we may want to stabilize the wheels. We'll keep that goal in the back of our heads. We may, we may need to solve that later. But one idea Kimber had was to fix the wheels onto the axle, so to glue them or tape them. And I actually did that to one of the wheels over here. So we could attach the wheels onto the axle, but that won't make that still won't make the wheels spin because the hole that I've cut here is pretty tight in this box. So if we did that, if we fix the wheels to the axle, we'd also maybe need to cut a bigger hole to let the axle spin. Okay, so that's one solution. Because Fix... right now the wheels are doing this and making it slow down because it's like doing that. Yeah, show me that again. Hold it up again. You said the wheels are doing this. Show me that again. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so so Kimber's saying that the wheels are like going in like this, so it's making it sort of like, it's making it like pigeon-toed <laughs> kind of, and that's not what you want your car to be. You want the wheels to stay straight up and down. So, all right, so there's one imagined solution to making the wheels spin is fixing the wheels to the axle and cutting a bigger hole for the axle. Does anyone have another idea? How else could we make these wheels spin? Does anyone have another imagined idea? Yeah, how about Aaron? Little Aaron, <laughs> mini Aaron. <laughs> Maybe you can get some cardboard and cut it on like a circle like we did. Yeah, we could, you guys made nice big wheels too. So we could potentially make some bigger wheels and we could fix those onto the axle too. That's I bet what you're doing is you're making your wheels stick to your axle 
and then making it so the axle can spin. Anybody else have any other ideas for how we could get these wheels to spin? If not, I'll, I'll go with Kimber's idea. All right, so here's what I'll do. I'm going to, I'm gonna show you what I did over here and then I'm gonna repeat this <laughs> three times basically. So especially if all you've got at home is some tape. If you've got hot glue, dude, you can do so much stuff with hot glue. If you don't have hot glue, that's okay. You can do so much stuff with tape. So if all you've got is tape, I've got, I put some tape here and up and then flat and up the side of the stick there. And then I cut it down so that now my chopstick is, is fixed inside my wheel. When I turn the chopstick, it turns the wheel as well. So now I'm gonna send this back through my box. Oh, we said we needed to make this hole bigger though. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab something that's bigger than my chopstick, like this pencil. There we go. And I'm just gonna make that hole just a little bit bigger. You can always make a hole bigger. It's much harder to make a hole smaller. This is something that my grandpa used to say, measure twice, cut once, same principle. Make small changes. This is actually a part of computational thinking called incremental design, which means that you do just a little bit at a time and you make it a little bigger and a little bigger and a little more and a little more until you kind of get to that like baby bear just right situation. Okay, so the axle's a little bigger or the axle hole is a little bigger, that's working. And then if I send it through to the other side, there we go. Now that spins way easier. So now I need to fix this wheel onto the other side, like so. So I'm gonna grab my tape. And I'm gonna tape it up the chopstick and onto the other wheel. And I can't wait to see the rovers you guys are making at home, by the way. I have a feeling they're going to outshine my rover and that is in fact what I hope. I am a teacher who recognizes that I'm not usually the smartest person in the room. My students are brilliant. <laughs> so can't wait to see what you guys are making. Perhaps uh, like many famous cars, such as Greased Lightning or Lightning McQueen, your car will have a name, perhaps with lightning in the title. <laughs> are there famous cars that aren't named something lightning? I can't think of any. Kirby, <laughs> that, that is a, a famous car, a fancy car for, for you uh, TV land viewers out there. <laughs> oh, what, what's Christine, Matt? Oh, it's in a Stephen King novel. There's a famous car. That would explain why I have not heard of that. I can't stand being scared. I'm not a haunted house dweller that down, there we go, cut that down, tear that off, there we go. So now, ha ha ha, look at there. I've got some wheels that are fixed onto the axle. Fixed means in place. So now if I start to test it a little bit, ooh, hoo, 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 look at there, those wheels are spinning. This is part of my incremental design as well. I did one axle and that's working like I want it to. So I feel empowered to go on and do the same thing <laughs> with the second axle. It's always a good thing to uh, test things out as you go to make sure you're not pursuing a foolish, <laughs> a foolish uh, course of action. Okay, ah, my next step was to make the axle hole bigger. So I put a pencil in there, yep. Make the axle hole bigger. We are right on track time-wise, by the way. I think we're gonna get this car working just in time to do some remote coding. That's pretty exciting. All right, I'm gonna fix both wheels onto the axle here. So here's one. Tape over and up. Pull it down there. Oh, that's uh, David suggested Mater as a name of a famous car. That's pretty great. <laughs> Uh, uh, and Matt said he forgot about Mater. Everybody always does forget about Mater, you know? He's the forgotten hero oh, <laughs> of cars. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna cut that tape down just a skosh. Tear it off. I don't know about you guys, but I am going through tape and boxes 
like a fiend while in quarantine. Also tea, but <laughs> mostly tape boxes and toilet paper rolls. One of my, uh, I accidentally threw away a toilet paper roll the other day and saw it in the trash and I was like, no, gold, why? What, what a forgetful thing to do. Okay, got some tape. Taping that other wheel on is I think the trickiest part because it's like already on the, on the axle and the axle's already through. Okay, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep in mind what Kimber said and try to make the wheels as straight up and down as possible. There we go. All right. I'm going to trim it down. There we go. And trim it down. There we go. Tear it off. Mm. Mm. Got it. Ooh, this is looking promising, team. I think my wheels are going to spin. Oh, look at there. Look at that. That is some slick business, y'all. What? This tea is delivery. Yes. Okay, let's test it out on my ramp over here. Three, two, one. <laughs> it worked. That's amazing. This was some great engineering, y'all. Let's check it out. I think I can. I think I can split screen it. Yeah. Here we go. Three, two, one. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, how, sh sh this feels selfish. Show me your appreciation. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Ketchy. Thank you. Thank you, Sams. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> Got to celebrate each other in these weird and, and wonderful times. Okay. All right. So we, we accomplished our second goal now of making the wheels spin and getting the car to move. Now, we're not gonna do this last oh, part, but if we were to give our car even a, another goal, what other goals do you think that we could, yeah, thanks. Um, what other goals do you think that we could have for our Rover? Let me go back to gallery view and see what other goals, what other ideas we have. What do you think, Kimber? What's another goal we could have for our little Rover here? What do you think? I think maybe making it going faster, like, yeah, that's a good one. We could make it, it go. It rolls right now. Say again. It rolls right now, but it rolls. We, we can make it go yeah. a bit faster. What's one idea you can imagine to make this, to make our car go faster? What do you think? Um, this might sound a bit shocking, but I think a bit more weight on the car. Yeah, I, I am not shocked make by it that. Go down I think the ramp. I think that's a great idea. It potentially just adding more weight to it. So it kind of gets momentum. That could also be a great way. Another goal could be to make it go farther. Right now, if I show you here, well, it's kind of stopped by a house, <laughs> but it doesn't go too very far. So another goal potentially could be to make it go farther. So faster or farther and weight might help with either of those. What else do you guys think? What's another goal that we could establish for our rover? Farther, faster, what else? Anybody have any other ideas for what you could get your rover to do or be? Am I really the only one with ideas here? No, not at all. Micah's got one. What's your idea, Micah? I think we can hear you. Let's see. Yep, we can hear you. Um. You could make it so that it rolls for longer. Ah, yeah, so that it rolls for longer. So um, what is an idea, and to put that another way so that it rolls for longer, to make it kind of roll farther and like make it like all the way across the room or something like that? Yeah, yeah. so that it rolls for a longer time period. Yeah, what could we do? What could we change about our rover design or anything else? What could we change about the design to make it roll farther? What do you think? Um, I don't know. Maybe you could make it so that instead of the only force pulling it is gravity, you could make it so that, um, like, maybe you could put a motor in it, like an actual car. Um, that's an amazing idea. And Micah, you win the award, the award for the best transition. 
That's great because <laughs> that's where we're headed, Micah, is we're going to put motors on this thing so that it'll do exactly what we tell it to do. Round of applause for Micah with the best transitions. Very nice. Thank you, Micah. <laughs> um, but before we do that, I'd love to see your progress on your rovers. So if you've got a rover you've been working on, hold it up to the camera. I want to show it off. Let's go to Micah first. All right, Micah, I'm going to spotlight you so everybody can see. Look at there. That's awesome. So it looks like you've got, do you have one wheel on or two so far? Oh, you're muted. You gotta unmute yourself again. Sorry, man. <laughs> there we go. I have two wheels, but yeah. I'm going to only have three because I have a slit on the bottom so that a wheel can stick it. Ooh, that's a cool design. So you're making like a, a tri-wheeled vehicle, like a tricycle or like a wheelbarrow kind of. Yeah. That's cool. I can't wait to see how that turns out. Keep working on it. That's great. Who else has one that uh, they want to show off? You want to hold it up to the camera so I can see what you got? Let's go to Regina. What you got, Regina? Show it off. Yeah. I think we can hear you too. Oh, okay. Yeah, I uh, used caps for my wheels, but I struggle with the same problem you had. My axles were too high up, so I had mm -hmm. to lower them and lower them. So. I see that. That's great. So what, what are those the caps of, can I ask? Uh, the big water bottles. Oh, nice. These water bottles, so they're the cap. I, I saved them to bring to school for my maker space every <laughs> week. Great. That along with toilet paper, paper towels, egg cartons. Yeah. What did you what did you use to poke a what did you use to poke a hole? Plastic can be kind of hard to poke a hole in. What did you use to it poke a hole? It was hard. I don't have a knitting needle, but I have a meat thermometer. A meat thermometer. So <laughs> I'm using a meat thermometer and then because I'm using chopsticks, the one end was easy to get it in yeah. pointy. The other end wasn't, so then I was using a pen to make that hole make larger. Bigger. That's awesome. So meat thermometer. I've been thinking about so many ways to poke holes in things because that's a very necessary thing to do. Meat thermometer. That you get the award for the most creative hole poking thing today. That's great. <laughs> yes. Yeah, sadly, some of my materials are at school. So yeah, Work with what I have at home. Um, Leslie had an idea. Ooh, this was cool. Leslie had an idea for, I think this was how to make it go faster, um, that we wanted to share in the comments here. Leslie had the idea to put two straws through it, add balloons on the end of them and blow up the balloons and then let the air out and it would go faster and it would probably go farther. So making a balloon powered car, that would be pretty dope as well. I don't have any balloons, but if you have balloons, you should do that and you should show me. That's cool. Who else has a rover they want to show off? I want to see like one or two more. How about you, Kimber? Let's take a look at yours. <laughs> yeah. So I just use like a sketching lesson mix. <laughs> yeah. And pencils for the axles and then uh -huh. tape. Lots Great. of tape. Great. That's awesome. There's and are the wheels... Say again. There's tape right here. I cut it off because it's a bit yeah. big. But... Yeah. That's great. So when you when you put it oh, down on the ground, does do the wheels turn and the box move around them? Oh, nice. Look at you moving your camera like a pro. Yeah. Well, it's like, it's kind of a, I'm going to get a So it might help you to do what I did too, to make your the holes for your axles a little bit bigger so that those pencils can spin a little more freely. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it's moving. That's awesome, Kimber. That's great. Let's show some appreciation for Kimber. Let's give her a round of applause, some snaps, some thumbs up. Yeah, looking good. How about anybody else? Want to show off your rover that you've made so far? Yeah, let's go to Aaron. And make sure you unmute yourself, Aaron. And we'll, can you do it? Yeah, there we go. We can hear you. Show it off. Yeah, that's great. So it looks like you cut a big box down a little. Oh, that's a tiny box. That's the cutest little cereal box I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got the wheels made out of other, uh, a Triscuit box, I see. Yeah, there we go. Those wheels are moving great, man. Those look cool. So when you set it down on the ground and you and you roll the box, does it also? Yeah, very nice. It's like doing because it's bending. It's what's bending? This one. This oh, one. that wheel is bending a little bit? I learned that last time. Yeah. You need to use, like thicker cardboard for it to kind of. Yeah. This is 
and not Ben. Yeah, that was Kimber was just imagining a solution that she had tried before, which is that she had that same problem where the wheels were a little flimsy. So she just put on, she found thicker, like corrugated cardboard, like this stuff, like an Amazon box. Yeah. And that made a little bit sturdier wheel. So that might help you out, um, mini Aaron, as well. <laughs> Maybe All right. I could cut it so it could, like, make it more so it doesn't, like, tip over. Say say that part again. I can cut it. Oh yeah. Are you thinking you can cut your circle to be a little bit more round, and that way it won't have like a a a a point where it has a lot more pressure on it, right? If you make it really nice and round, it maybe won't bend quite as much. It'll be a little stronger. That's a good idea too. Yeah. Circles can be really really strong when they are really true circles. That's great. Awesome. Well. We have about 20 minutes left, which is perfect for us to transition to remote coding for the day. But I wanna say, nice job with the engineering design process today, everybody. Let's give ourselves a round of applause with our rovers. Round of applause, whoa, hit my microphone, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I hope that you keep working on your rovers as we start doing remote coding, because only one person can remote code at a time. Um, so uh, as we transition to remote coding, keep working on your rovers if you'd like, and let's take a look at what we've got. I'm gonna clean up my space here just a little bit so that there's not scissors and blades and knitting needles all over. A, a poorly placed knitting needle can really ruin your day, so I don't wanna do that. Okay, great. So let me grab our little mouse rover here and take a look at them. All right. So here's our little mouse rover. And this little mouse rover is just made with a hummingbird. And I got some, uh, the hummingbird comes with some nice orange wheels. Let's set this back here, there we go. The hummingbird comes with these, I'm gonna take the mouse off the top so you can really see how it's made. So I've got a hummingbird. I've got two rotation servos here, two rotation servo motors. I have screwed on those nice orange wheels. But I lost, there's a little plastic thing that comes in with the wheels. Yeah, those wheels right there, Kimber, exactly. There's this nice little clear plastic thing that comes around the outside, but I lost those. So I made some treads for my wheels out of some nice thick rubber bands. <laughs> so if you are also struggling to get traction, struggling to get your wheels on your rover to stick to whatever you're trying to roll on, you could use rubber bands. That makes a great, great little traction thing. So it's two motors that I Velcroed to the battery pack, and then I hot glued just a ping pong ball onto the battery pack as close as I could to the wheels. Now you could put a popsicle stick on there and make it a little longer if you wanted. Um, and then I used a um, pipe cleaner to attach the hummingbird onto the top. So now this thing is all, it's ready to go. It could be a little rover, but I thought it would be fun in the spirit of hummingbird where you don't just make a robot, you make a robot that's your own. I made a little cardboard mouse and I put some Velcro on the bottom of it and I put some Velcro right here, right along the hummingbird so that I could put the mouse on there because are you ready to see the maze that the mouse needs to go through? Let me show you. There is our cardboard maze for the mouse to go through. I'm gonna walk over there and put the mouse in the maze so that you can see how it'll navigate through. Here we go. Oh, I see the cheese, I see the cheese. You see the cheese? I see the cheese. Okay. Here's where the mouse starts. Here we go. Hi. I'm going to adjust a couple small things to make sure there's enough room for Mousy to get through. Mousy's been taking snacks during quarantine, too. I realized you couldn't hear any of what I was just saying, but it was all really funny. Just assume that. Okay, so, <laughs> so you see where the mouse is starting in that top left-hand corner, and you see where it's supposed to get to, too, right? The cheese? Yeah. Great. All right, so um, what I'm going to do is we're going to put, uh, you should have gotten in your email a link to a NetsBlocks programming thing. Um, I'll get to your question in just a second, Kimber. So your NetsBlocks programming um, uh, uh, file 
When you open it up and you want to make sure, uh, you may be able to click the hyperlink. You may need to copy and paste that hyperlink. Make sure I, you're I using Chrome. You got it up? Good. Make sure you're using Chrome as your, um, as your uh, Internet so Explorer well. oh. language. Yeah. Sure. Browser. Thank you. <laughs> Words. Words are hard. Um, so make sure you're using Chrome and that you get that up. And then the other thing you'll want to do is basically do what I've done here. Make sure that you can see your see zoom so you can see the mouse and oh, also nice. make sure that you can see um actually i think it was okay before Not, yeah yeah um so uh, uh make sure that you can see your programming language and make sure that you can see zoom as well all right so let's go back to gallery view and uh raise your hand if you um you're on the other screen <laughs> um, make sure that you that you've got those things resized and raise your hand if you've got those two things resized if you've got zoom and you've got uh the nets blocks program ready to go looks like kimber might have it ready to go so maybe we'll go over to kimber first and then we're going to go to you chase okay so you're going to be our second one and maybe david will be our third one okay so does anybody have a question about what uh, yeah david let's go to you looks like you have a question we're going to unmute you go ahead um, I, where's the link to the, uh, that thing? We're going to put it in the, in the zoom chat. We're just going to copy it really quick and we're going to put it in the zoom chat so that you can open that up and have it ready to go. Okay. See how it made yep. two windows. Yep. How come it, how come it says robot being used by someone else? Cause somebody's connected. I think it's actually me from when we were testing it before. <laughs> so Matt's okay. going to, Matt's going to kick me off. And then what you can do to connect to it is you can hit C, C to connect C. to it. Yep. And Your then let's see, connected. is she connected, Matt? Not yet. Nope, not yet. Hit C. And then does that little arrow? There it is. Yep. Somebody's connected now. I think it's you, Kimber. Yep, you're connected. I'll go over here. Start using those arrow keys. Forward makes the mouse go forward. I can't see the code. <laughs> <laughs> went to the went to the side. You'll have to use the arrow keys to make it. There you go. Look at you go. Yes. It's, she goes, not, look. it's not very accurate, but that's okay. It's a mouse. Oh. It's not a it's not a smart mouse. It's a, there you go. Oh no. <laughs> You're doing great, Kimber. Let's give her some appreciation. Oh, it's a little narrow in here. This is a this is a ah! <laughs> This is great. You're doing so great. Make that turn, Kimber. Yeah, and then yeah. try to straighten it out. Ooh, back up a little bit. You can hit the down arrow to go backwards. There you go. Uh huh. Ooh. Down, down. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Get out of there, Mousy. There you go. We'll fix that. We'll fix that wall for you. And then, would you? That was great. Let's pause it there, Kimber. Let's give Kimber a round of applause. Very nice. And then let's go to Chase. Will you hit the X button on yours, Kimber? Nice navigating. And Chase, unmute yourself so we can hear you. Right. There we go. And then you, on your keyboard, hit the C key to connect. It didn't work. Hmm, I hear it making the, oh, did it, oh, you're connected, yeah. So now use the arrow keys, there you go. <laughs> we have some walls on it so that Mousy can't fall off our table, all right. There you go. So there's left key to turn it left. So it's always like oriented the way that the mouse is oriented. There you go. All right. <laughs> Gonna need to go left a little bit. There we go. Uh huh. Uh huh. There we go. Oh, no. oh wow. There you go. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Keep it's not working. You got it. All right. <laughs> All right. There you go. Yeah. yeah. You're getting it. You're getting it. Woo! Do it. Do it. Do it. So narrow. Oh man, you're doing great. Keep at it. <laughs> this mouse is mega mouse. This mouse is. <laughs> we got to have to make a little bigger channel for it. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Watch your, watch your butt there, mouse. <laughs> watch your hindquarters. Here you go. Let's make, okay. Now let's have you pause it there. Let's give Chase a round of applause. Very nice, very nice. And David, do you have yours up? So um, Chase, hit the X key 
on your keyboard to make you disconnect, right? right? And David, are you all set up and ready to go? Yeah. Okay, let's try it. Hit the C key to connect. Does it say connected? Okay. All right, now use the arrow keys to try and navigate it around. You're gonna take us home, David. You're gonna get us to that cheese. Listen, that's not how you get the cheese, David. You can't just run through walls. You're not. You're not I the incredible Hulk mouse. I think the wall is preventing me. I think it is. We'll we'll adjust the wall back for you. Can you get it? Oh man! Like, oh, he's trying to cheese. climb out of the cage over there. It's, that's that's not how you get the cheese either, David. <laughs> oh, you're getting there. Yes, yes, it's happening. Oh my gosh, we're so close. Ah ah. We did it! Round of applause for David and Chase and Kimber. It was a strategic climb. It was, yeah, it was a very strategic climb. You're like, listen, I had to blow off some, blow off some mouse steam. I had to, I had to reorient myself a little bit. Um, Here's how you go through the maze. You knock over all the walls and you can see the cheese. <laughs> so you can see the cheese. You make little mouse-shaped holes in the wall as you run through, right? That was great, David and Chase and Kimber. You guys actually did that really quickly. Do you guys want to give some advice? Because I'd love to give a couple more people a chance, too. Do you have some advice for the next person? And raise your hand if you'd like to be the next person to program. What, what advice do you have, Chase and David and Kimber? Um, what advice do you have, Kimber? And then we'll go to Chase. Um, my advice is it's not always going to go straight and it won't turn just like a 90 degree. It'll like go around if you hit it too many times. Yeah, it, it's so. uh, that's good advice. The programming to go straight is way harder than it looks. So oh, it yeah. sort of moseys like it's a mouse might. Showing. Yeah. What advice do you have, Chase? Oh. Uh, it's really sensitive and you can't really hold down the keys. You have to just kind of tap it frequently. Yeah, so you can't hold down the key. The way we programmed it is that you just tap it to move it just a little, little by little. Yeah. How about you, David? Do you have any advice for the next person? Yeah, it it has some weird turns. <laughs> it's uh, quirky. It's a quirky little mouse. Yeah. All right, so I think we've got two people that really want to try it now too. Leslie and Rashul. Let's, uh, let's go to Rashul first. So unmute yourself, Rashul. Thank you for that advice, David and Kimber, by the way. There we go. I think I can hear you now. Yep. Yeah. All right, so do you have your screens resized so that you can see Zoom and Nets blocks at the same time? Uh, no. Okay, so uh, no. now you got it? Okay, so yeah, just make sure it's kind of like this so that you can see the code and you can also see me, but you'll see the full screen. So then on your keyboard, hit the C key on your keyboard to connect to it. And okay. does it say connected? It says this robot's still in use by ah. someone. Matt is resetting it for you right now. We, all right, try oh, to hit C key again. It says connected. Okay, great. So you're connected. So you can use those arrow keys to start moving the mouse around. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You, <laughs> it's, going, it's going right for destructo mode. Now the arrow keys move it forward. Turn right, turn left, according to the mouse's orientation. Not on the wall, that's my advice. Yeah, we'll, we'll scooch the wall back where it came from. You're doing great, okay. Rashul. Yes, you got this. Uh-huh. Little, Ooh. little bit at a time. Really careful, little mouse. You're doing great. Ooh, so accurate. Ooh, ooh, look, ooh, look at that. You see that navigation, y'all? Mm, that was some very fine mouse uh engineering in your mouse navigation mouse navigation Ma mouse, mouse navigation. captaining all right rashul that was great pause right there rashul let's give rashul a round of applause very nice rashul but great programming and rashul will you hit the x key to disconnect and then leslie do you want to share a video real quick leslie because i think you had raised your hand that you wanted to try as well was that the other person who wanted to try how do you start the program um, so to start the program, you'll hit the C key on your keyboard. And now on your programming screen, does it say connected? Yes. Yes, okay, so you can use your arrow keys to try and control that mouse. So hit the up arrow key, that'll make it go forward. The back one will make it go backwards. Why Sam's got to stop. Oh, go ahead. Somebody's connected. We're not sure if it's you though, Leslie. You, does your screen say connected? Yeah, it's stuck though. Okay. Let's try and yeah. scooch it. <clears throat> we'll kind of reset it there. 
And let's see now, if you hit the forward arrow key, does it move forward? I'm hmm. hitting the forward arrow key. Yeah. We're going to try and, we're going to disconnect you and then have you reconnect again, just in case somebody else accidentally connected. Yeah. All right, hit the C key again on your keyboard. It, do it doesn't work. You'll just want to do it once, though, just once and kind of let it, let it. It says oh. connected. It says connected. Okay, now yeah. try your arrow keys. Oh. The arrow keys aren't doing anything. Ah, yours says connected, but Matt's side of it doesn't say connected. That's interesting. Sure. No, it says connected. Okay. Make sure, hey, uh, hey, um, whoever's tuned in on Leslie's, I'm not sure if that's your name or not, but um, uh, make sure that the Nets blocks window is the one that's like active. So don't click on the Zoom window. Click on the coding window so that that one's active. And now try your arrow keys. Hit C. Again, we're gonna reconnect you again. Okay. It's connected, now use your arrow keys. Let's try that. <gasps> there we go, yeah, good persisting. I'm gonna go fix the wall. <laughs> I go there you go, got it. All right, yeah, yeah, doing great things. <laughs> Making a nice wide channel to get through. <laughs> Destructo mouse strikes again. All right, can you go left a little bit? There you go, now you're getting really good at it. That's right. Let's adjust that wall a little bit so there's room to get through. There you go, thread that needle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or push stuff out of the way, either one. <laughs> there we go, give it another turn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And now while, while this person is finishing, raise your hand if you also want to have a turn to program the mouse if you haven't had a chance yet. Does anybody else want to have a try? Yeah? Okay. Well, you already had a chance, Micah. So we're going to, uh, or did you have a different question? There you go. Now go right. All right. Oh, you're getting so close. We're going to let you finish it off, Leslie. Yep. Woo. Throw that needle back up just a little bit and we'll fix the wall for you. There you go. It, the channel opened up. Yeah. Oh, find that cheese, find that cheese, hey! Nice job, nice job. Let's give them a round of applause, a round of applause. That is wonderful. I can't believe it. We had five different people from all over the world um, to uh, program with us. We had um, one person ask, if anybody needs to leave at any time, you can, certainly, you can certainly leave the meeting whenever you need to. We're just finishing up at the end here. Um, so while we're, uh, while we're kind of finishing up and reflecting, does anybody have any other questions or any thoughts that you'd like to offer about how this went or something you liked? Anybody want to share anything like that? Raise your hand if you do. No, but this thing has something to say. Oh, what is, uh, what is your puppet from yesterday have to say, Kimber? <laughs> Going to say. Oh, gotta, gotta fix it. Oh, we did have a question come in from Facebook, though. What was Doreen our... Doreen is wondering what programming language... Oh, that's a great question. Doreen was wondering what programming language we are using. And so we are using a programming language that's really, really similar to Snap, but it's called NetsBlocks. Um, it's something that um, we didn't develop NetsBlocks. <clears throat> I'm not sure who did, actually, but Tom Lowers, Dr. Tom Lowers, who <clears throat> started BirdBrain and invented the hummingbird and the finch and everything, um, he saw them at a conference and thought that saw a, a really great potential for what they were doing. And so he's using Nets blocks to program, uh, to set up this remote coding thing. So actually on our website, if you go to, um, this website right here, birdbraintechnologies.com slash robotics at home, there is a way for you to do remote coding at any time because Tom has set up some robots with some Nest cameras, which are 24 hour cameras. And so you can click on the thing and do just like we're doing here at any time. You don't have to wait for the next class to do it. So you can go there and do remote coding. There's a dragon, there's a gnome, there's a Ferris wheel. There's all kinds of cool and strange things for you to program at home. So if you wanna try it for yourself, you can go there and try it, yeah. Did anybody else have any other questions or anything? Well, I would love to see, especially if you weren't quite done with your rover during class today, I'd love for you to share with us on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. You can tag um, BirdBrain. You can put hashtag recycled rover so that we know what, you're, what you did, what you made. And if you want to, you can even tag me 
I'd love to see, like yesterday, Sam finished his puppet and then he posted it on Twitter and he posted it singing uh, a song from the new Frozen movie. And it was just so funny, not only to watch a puppet sing a song from Frozen, but to watch a hillbilly puppet sing a song from Frozen. It was delightful. Um, <clears throat> And uh, also, if you have any questions about anything, you can always email us, info at birdbraintechnologies.com. Any questions or ideas, um, ideas for collaborations you think we might uh, be good at or projects that you'd like to see or questions about technical things. Um, but definitely go to, head to this website if you haven't been there before. There's remote coding there. There are all kinds of project videos and ideas and outlines there. There's also a way if you want to have a hummingbird at home, um, I know there are a few people here who have hummingbirds at home to um, make and build and code along with us. Um, you can purchase one from there. Um, and then also you can preview our upcoming classes that are coming up. So yesterday we did some puppetry, today we did some rovers, and Fridays, Fridays are devoted to teachers. So Fridays at two o'clock we have what we call teacher talks, and we had a great group, some of whom are here today again, tune in on Friday to just ask questions and spitball and think about how to teach with hummingbird and finch. So it's less about how to use them or what to do with them and more how to teach with it. How would you apply this project? And we also preview the projects that we're gonna be doing next week. So next week, I think we're doing Tiny Drummer and Robot Petting Zoo next week, I think on Tuesday and Thursday. So I can't wait to see you guys next week again. I'd like to give you all a round of applause for all of the recycled rovers that you guys made, but this, is awesome. This was great today, you guys. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, my name is Kelsey, and from everybody at Bird Brain, we thank you guys for tuning in. So awesome. See you later, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. We can't wait to see what you make on social media. On Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, you can tag at Bird Brain Tech or hashtag Hummingbird Kit, or you can even tag me. If you have any questions, be sure to email us info at birdbraintechnologies.com. We can answer questions about purchasing, about learning, about teaching, and about professional development. If you haven't been there yet, be sure to visit our Robotics at Home page. There you can purchase a kit for yourself, learn how to use it, and even join one of our upcoming webinars. Until we see you in class, thanks for watching from everyone at Birdbrain Technologies.